Flag bearers are broken and good. Sila is a flag bearer. Therefore, Sila is pretty okay, I guess. Welcome to the new and rebranded Was It Worth, where I'll be breaking down operators, their kit, throwing in examples, and then giving my opinionated opinion on the character and whether you should pull or not. Today's operator is a newly released Backpack 2.0, Sila. Sila has been under a lot of scrutiny this past week, with some people denouncing her usability already. You may have noticed a lack of showcases on YouTube, and it's not hard to see why. Support Vanguards can't exactly be shown well when most content doesn't even need Vanguards past Moto and Elysium S1. Regardless, so I'm going to be presenting what I found playing with her and letting you guys form your own opinions on her. Her talent 1 gives her an ensign that buffs ESPD of allies while debuffing enemy ESPD in the 8th house around. Unlike your usual summonable drones like Shamaridor and friends, Sila's summon is tied to herself and her skills, which we'll talk about later. Let's take a look at these clips. Both of these clips use Ash to solo this guy, but without Sila's passive, Ash can't kill in time. Simply by existing, Sila makes the difference between a kill and La Pluma's death. Now, obviously, this is a very specific case where more ASPD is huge, as Ash gets way more damage with just one or two more attacks, but you get the idea. More speed equals more damage equals you win. Perfect combo for S3. Same idea applies to the ASPD debuff on enemies, but it's more geared towards S2's defensive capabilities. Talent 2 isn't really huge, but it's nice. It's literally just minus 2 DP on a Nyx deployed unit. So basically, faster standard barrel wombo combo. Moving on to our skills. S1 is a carbon copy of Elysium S1, so there's nothing to really talk about here. It's already good by default. Now, I always hear people say, Myrtle is better because she takes 2 seconds less to use the skill. Name me a map where it's so tight where this actually matters. Even in CC Blade, where SP and DP down attacks both existed, Elysium S1 was the pick for 9 ops risk 31, which was the most optimized max risk clear due to the sheer amount of DP it shed out. The only times that a 2 second difference will usually matter is during 1P release, but that's not exactly for normal players and you have better options like Kiave and Texas there anyways. For most players, Myrtle's gonna be the pick anyways due to how cheap she is to race, so uh, I'm not sure why I even talked about this. <clears throat> Moving on, skill 2. Skill 2 throws the ensign at the operator with the lowest health percentage in a Texas Diamond Square thing range. It heals 306 HP per second and buffs for 50% of the operator's defense. As far as DP gen goes, it's actually almost at Moto S1 level, being just 0.01 DP per second off. While in terms of healing, it's on the lowest end of the single target healing skills. The closest comparison being Whispering Seals on skill 2, which comes out to 321 HP per second. The healing power is just okay, if anything it's a bit low, but that's before we factor in the 50% defense boost. This will be dependent on what operator you have in healing and what enemies are facing, but generally the buffer will keep your operator alive over the skill's 15 second duration with how prevalent physical enemies are. Tender 1 further helps with the lowered ASPD on enemies just to slightly decrease the damage dealt. It's a great skill that I don't really see much use of in high risk, but at M3 this could be your go-to skill for general use. I don't recommend building it or even using it over S3 due to the sheer amount of utility that we will be talking about very soon, but with skill 2 you can have very stable starts and you can continue to support your operators even later on in the stage. 50% defense is a solid number and when it's paired with DP gen that you're gonna bring anyways, it makes this skill worth bringing. Now, an important note that actually isn't that important. This skill is regeneration and not standard heal. What this fancy term means is just that it can heal enmity operators such as Mudrock, Heliger, and La Pluma. I've seen a lot of people praise this skill for that fact, but think about it. When do you ever need healing on an enmity operator? The whole point of them is to sit there and clap cheeks alone. There's definitely gonna be situations where this is helpful, but do think about the practical usages before immediately jumping on board the skill and singing its praises. Finally, the skill you've all been waiting for. Skill 3. Slow, DP gen, stun, damage amplification all at once. The most broken Vanguard skill ever? Skill 3 is a 10 second skill that throws a flag at an enemy and deals some physical damage. The DP gen is actually the lowest of all standard barrier skills, being 0.33 DP per second compared to the next lowest, Myrtle skill 2 at 0.4 DP per second. It's actually the exact same DP gen as Saga S3, difference being that Sila makes all that DP in an instant while Saga gets hers over the duration of a skill. 
Definitely not an, a low amount, but compared to her peers, the difference is night and day. She stuns Severan in the Ensign's 3x3 range for 3.5 seconds and slows Severan at the same time. The slow apply is a debuff sluggish, the same one that all slow supporters apply at a 80% movement speed reduction. It's way more potent than Elysium's slow, with the downside of not being able to stack it with slow supporters like Suzuran. Speaking of Suzuran, Sailao also applies the same debuff that Suzuran does, Fragile. What this does is boost the damage dealt, specifically the final damage after defense and resistance. So if your operator is doing 10 damage, it'll do 13 damage with Scylla S3. If they are doing 10k damage, it'll be increased to 13k damage. You get the idea, the higher the damage after defense slash rest, the more you gain from using this skill. This doesn't stack with Suzuran, Pram, Shaw, Mortem, EX since it's the exact same debuff. There's a few things to address with this skill. First off, the range. It's both a blessing and a curse. You have to be wary about where you place your face or since the Ensign spawns on the enemy closest to the blue box. If you're on a multi lane map and you want to use it on an enemy that's on a specific lane, you might get boned if you just face her in the direction covering both lanes, but that multi lane aspect can also help you out if you use it right. Like for example in this Crown Slayer demo I guess thing, she's stunning the race in the middle lane and also Crown Slayer once she comes out on the left. Next up, her 10 second duration. The skill does an absurd amount of things, but this short duration grounds it just a little. What I mean is, you don't have much time to burst with her. 15 seconds is usually the golden number due to all the things that last that amount, like X2, skill 3, Shamari, skill 2, Elysium, S2. 10 seconds is pretty short and can feel underwhelming when first using her. However, in my opinion, this is redeemed by the lowest SP cost of 20 SP. Lower duration and faster rotations. The skill may have lower DP gen, but her talent too allows you to place Elysium or Mortal fast to pick up a slack. The sun and slow also gives you more leeway to generate enough DP to place on your actual units like Monster and Calcet here. And of course, Talon 1 synergizes with this more offensive base skill by boosting your allies ASPD by 10%. Here's where I propose her greatest combo, Ash. Sylla's whole skill rotation takes 30 seconds, while Ash takes 6.2 seconds to empty out her clip with a 25 SP cost for a total of 31.2 seconds rotation. Using all the bullets might not be useful usually, but with Scylla's stun, you can stun the target for an entire clip. Ash has a base stun duration of 4 seconds, and with Scylla's 3.5 seconds stun, you're more than good to go to clap all the way through the 6.2 second skill duration. So basically, short duration plus short duration, match made in heaven. Adding on Scylla's damage amplification to Ash's already insanely high damage per hit, this combo is one that's truly terrifying and can clap pretty much anything that isn't stun immune or doesn't have a defense higher than Ash's S2 attack. So, which skill to mastery then? All three of them have their merits, right? Skill 1 has insane DP gen, skill 2 has cool healing and Myrtle level DP gen, while skill 3 has its skill 3. Go for Myrtle Elysium for your DP gen needs, skill 3 is a very unique skill that can't be replaced. It's worth sacrificing a bit of DP4 even if it may not be that insane outside of CC. In my experience, it takes getting used to for sure, but you can definitely run Scylla as your main and only vanguard. You just need to be able to use her stun and her slow effectively. While Scylla may seem underwhelming as of now, her true prowess is in CC. CC follows a certain format each time. Throw one mega buff elite enemy at you every 30 or so seconds. This format is exactly what she's built for. Every time someone shows up, you just slap a flag on them and start swinging or ashing away. Being able to perform so many roles in just one unit makes her incredibly valuable. You might even potentially be able to remove the likes of Angie and Suzuran from your team in favour of her. I think she has extremely high potential in CC, where you want to cut as many operators as you want with the amount of deploy limit and squad limit text they give. I've been extremely impressed with her performance on the training maps at the very least, but we'll see. Maybe I'll turn out to be wrong and she's the worst possible option in CC7. That's it for the Scylla review. Do I think she's a must pull? No. Myrtle and Elysium will do more than fine for the average player. But for CC high risk enjoyers, definitely keep an eye on her. Personally, I've been really enjoying using her and messing around with the Ash combo. So much so that I think I'm gonna make a whole separate showcase just for that. So yeah, she's definitely an M9 for me once she comes to global. That's about it. Thanks for watching and like and sub. Goodbye.